Good morning, Internet. I am Matt Bouillac, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at the 37th problem from the Project Euler Problem Archive. Now, this problem asks us to find the sum of the 11 prime numbers which are left and right truncatable. And it defines a truncatable number as uh, one for which we can remove any number of digits from the left-hand side or any number of digits from the right-hand side and always get a prime number as the result. Now, we'll note that it specifically excludes one-digit primes from that definition, and so we'll need to be sure to uh, not count those toward our sum. Now, there are a couple of hints sort of built into the statement of this problem um, that suggests we might be able to get away with just a brute force approach. That is, uh, just trying each of the prime numbers in order, testing each to see if it is left and right truncatable, uh, and continuing until we find our 11 solution primes. Uh, and that's actually the first hint, the fact that we're told that there are only 11 such primes. Uh, if we didn't have that hint, we would have to come up with some theory as to why there's an upper bound uh, so that we would know when to stop searching uh, or use a different approach entirely. The other hint is that uh, Project Euler will rarely require us to do prime testing on very large numbers. And that's because doing so either requires significant computational resources, uh, especially in 2003 when this problem was first published, uh, or more sophisticated mathematical methods. The algorithm that I usually use for doing prime testing in my videos is called the sieve of Eratosthenes, and despite the fancy Greek name, it's actually a pretty simple algorithm. Uh, I think most high school students would have no problem understanding how it works. Uh, and so with those two things in mind, uh, we can consider attempting a brute force solution. And so with that, let's get into it. As usual, we will copy our template directory to make our problem directory. And let's open our main.cpp. But before we get to writing any new code, I want to take a look at some old code first. Um, and in particular, the primes class that uh, we wrote in a previous series of videos. Um, now, if you're interested in all the details of that, how this class works, what all it can do, um, I'll put links to those videos in the description. I'd encourage you to check those out. But for the purposes of solving our problem, we really only need to be concerned with these two functions. Uh, is prime here, which as you might expect, test to see if a number is prime, and get prime, which is used to get a specific prime number. Uh, and the way that works is that uh, given an argument n, it will give you the nth odd prime. And the reason I say odd prime is because if you were to pass in 0, then that gives you the even prime of 2. Okay, so with those two things in mind, let's add this to our program. In order to do that, we need to make a change to the make file. That's the file that just uh, tells the compiler how to put our program together. Um, and so we just need to say dash L num theory. Uh, the num theory library is where we put all the useful code that we've written in the past, uh, in past videos on this channel. Um, that we might want to use again. And so to use that, we just add this dash L num theory. Also going back to our main.cpp, we need to say include primes.h to actually make our program aware of the primes class. And let's make sure that that uh, library is, um, is built, that we're on the most recent version. So we'll just go in here and say make, and you can see that build, and uh, among the things that were built was the primes class right here. And so that's ready to go. And now we can start on our solution. 
So the first thing we'll need is some code for checking if a number is right truncatable or left truncatable. Uh, we'll start with right truncatable because the left case is a, is a bit more tricky. And so uh, we'll start with is uh, right trunk prime. And that's going to take a uh, reference to our primes class or to an instance of our primes class and a positive integer, uh, uint32t. Uh, and the reason we're starting with the right-hand side is because it's really easy to drop a digit from the right-hand side of a number. You just divide by 10 and ignore the remainder. Um, and so we'll say uh, while uh, p dot is prime um, n, uh, n divide equals 10. Um, but before we do that, we actually, as I mentioned in the intro, need to take care of a special case, which is when n is less than 10. So we'll say if n is less than 10, return false. As I mentioned, um, they specifically exclude the single digit primes from the definition. So we have to be sure to handle that case first. Um, now, after we've uh, looped repeatedly, dropping digits and checking to see if our number is still prime, uh, eventually we'll either reach a composite number, which means our uh, original number was not a right truncatable prime, or we'll get to zero. And so if we get to zero, then we'll return true. And if uh, we get to any non-zero number, um, then we return false. So we just can say, uh, return uh, n equals zero. So if n is zero, we'll return true. Okay, so now let's implement the left case. So we'll say if is left trunk prime, and this also will take a reference to an instance of our primes class and a positive integer. Okay, so the reason that I'm doing this case second is because while it's easy to drop digits from the right-hand side of a number, it's not so easy to drop digits from the left-hand side of a number. Um, however, uh, it is possible to get some number of digits from the right-hand side, which is kind of equivalent. Uh, for example, say we had a five-digit number and we wanted to drop the leftmost digit. Instead, we could get the four rightmost digits uh, as opposed to dropping the leftmost digit. And the way we do that is just by dividing by some power of 10 and taking the remainder. So uh, for our example that I just gave, we would divide by 10,000 and take the remainder, which would give us the four rightmost digits. And so our approach for is left trunk prime is just going to be to uh, divide by successively larger powers of 10, uh, checking to see that the remainder is always prime. Uh, until we get up to a power of 10 that is greater than our number n. Uh, and so let's say uh, u in 32 t n uh, or p o 10 is equal to 10. And we'll say uh, while uh, P O 10 is less than N times 10. Um, because we, we want to be sure to consider the case uh, or, or uh, check to see if the number in its entirety is uh, prime. And so we want to keep going one more after P O 10 is greater than N. Okay. And then we'll say if uh, not p dot is prime um, n mod p o 10, then return false. And then we'll just say uh, p o 10 times equals 10. So we get the next larger power of 10. 
and we make it all the way through uh, to checking the entire number, then we know it is a left truncatable prime. And so then we return true. Now, I don't really like uh, this check here. Now, if the compiler is smart enough, it might optimize this and cache this value of uh, n times 10. Um, but also this style of check can run into problems if n is very large. We probably won't hit that in our case for reasons I mentioned in the intro. Uh, but there is a limit to the size of a 32-bit number, and um, so we can, we can run into that if we're not careful. So there's actually a little bit of a trick we can do to change this condition here to something more like what we would expect. We would really like it to be, you know, checking to see is P O 10 less than N. Uh, and the way we can do that is by moving this multiplication here to before our check. And uh, then starting our power of 10 at one instead of 10. Um, now, when you're handling uh, loops like this, where there's kind of a tricky boundary case, it can be good to go through with the specific example to make sure that you haven't made any mistakes. Uh, so let's consider the number 23. Um, so uh, we start off, our power of 10 is 1. Um, and uh, so we say PO10, 1, is less than 23, yes. Uh, so we come in here, multiply 1 by 10. So now our power of 10 is 10. Uh, we take 23 uh, mod 10. That gives us 3. That is a prime, so we don't return false. Um, we come back up here to the top. We see power of 10 is 10, still less than 23. So we multiply it by uh, 10 again, so we get 100. Uh, then we do... Uh, 23 mod 100 uh, gives us just 23. That is still prime, so we don't return false. Uh, we return back up to the top of the loop, and then we check that uh, 100 is now not less than 23, and so we break out of the loop and return true. So that works as we expect. Um, as I just said, uh, doing an example like that can help you check that you're not making some kind of trivial off by one um, mistake. And speaking of trivial mistakes, uh, we again want to be sure not to make one here. And so we'll say if n is less than 10, return false. Because uh, single digit primes are excluded from the definition of truncatable numbers. Okay, so now we're ready to write our main solution. <clears throat> so we want a number for keeping track of our sum that's going to start at zero. We want a number for keeping track of the uh, number of solution primes we have found. So we'll say that's uh, going to start at zero also. We need an instance of our primes class. So we'll say primes p. <clears throat> Um, and then we'll need an index to the, the prime we're currently considering. So we'll call that uh, IDX. And then we'll also need a uh, variable for storing our prime or, or candidate, uh, or no, sorry, prime. And we'll call it uh, P. Okay. So uh, now we'll say IDX starts at zero. Um, we could start this at uh, 4 because um, 11, which is the first two-digit prime, is the fourth odd prime. Uh, and so we could start our index at 4, but we've already taken care of those single-digit primes in the code we wrote above. And so we can start at index 0. <clears throat> Excuse me. So then we'll say uh, while count is less than 11, that is, we're going to keep looping until we find all 11 of our solution primes. Uh, we'll say uh, p is equal to uh, p dot get prime uh, idx. 
and then we'll say if uh, is right trunk prime p comma p and is left trunk prime um, p comma p then we have found one of our solutions and so we'll say sum plus equals p plus plus count and then uh, go on to continue the next prime. So increment our index there. And finally, we'll say print uh, sum is equal to sum. And let's go back to our problem directory here and make. And it builds. And it runs. Okay, so we have a possible solution here. Uh, 748,317. So let's uh, pull up the archive again. And take a look at problem number 37. And you can see that that matches our solution. So thank you for joining me in this video, and I hope you'll uh, join me also in the next where I tackle problem number 38.